Hello, you are listening or watching the Holistic Travel Nurse podcast. I have a f- new friend, Anna Marie from Ireland, Ireland on, who is a massage therapist, a Reiki energy healer for many, many, many years, got into oils and um, has had many experiences with essential oils and she's going to share some of her stories with us. And we just want to thank you for being on, um, on a totally different time zone across the world. It's kind of cool. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you so much for reaching out to me, and thank you so much for having me on. I'm, I don't think I've ever done a podcast interview before, so I'm super excited. <laughs> oh, well, it's great to have an, um, an awesome accent like yours on the podcast. People that love accents <laughs> are just going to love to hear you. <laughs> thank you. It's, um, it's a fun accent. So, uh, ha- um, so how was your journey into oils? When did you start using this into oils? So I got introduced to essential oils in 2014. So at the time, my health would have been pretty poor. Um, I would have been constantly kind of we'll say, suffering with kind of we'll say, colds, um, kidney infections, throat infections were some of my, my biggest issues. Um, just constantly run down, very little energy, and kind of finding it struggling, kind of we'll say, even with my mood and my emotions and all the rest of it. Um, and didn't, like, I had kind of had some education about, like, you know, um, nutrition and things that I knew I should be exercising but I really wasn't feeling like I could do any of those good things for myself um so I got introduced um to them by a girl called uh, Rosie Graney so she was the, the person who brought the oils to Ireland um and she came to me for a massage and she started talking to me about essential oils now I had tried so many different therapies I had chronic sinusitis was one of my biggest issues so so bad that physically I could not breathe in or out of my nose for around four years and that caused so many issues for my respiratory system um I used to have asthma as a child and actually flared back up again and my digestive system was really really poor um so she started talking to me, telling me these stories about, you know, these people that she'd heard of kind of would say amazing, like stories from with using the oils. And she just asked me if I'd be open to trying them. So I'd spent so much on alternatives and kind of what's had gone down the traditional medical route and all the rest of it at this stage that I really was not thinking this was going to work for me. Um, but I was like, okay, so sleep, sleep was one of my biggest issues and I wasn't sleeping. So I was kind of like, okay, well, I'll try a couple of things for that. And I had some um, lower back discomfort. And I also um, was my sinus problem. So I started off my order. I got some peppermint for my sinuses. I got some balance oil and I got some serenity oil for my sleep. And I got some deep blue um, for my back. And I thought, okay, well, I can try, try some of these out on my clients as well as, as well as for personal use. Because I didn't really think that I was going to get the massive results. Um, so I started using those and I was so amazed. Within, um, one of, within about a month, I'd start kind of, say, sleeping through the night again just kind of got myself back into like a natural kind of rhythm. And um, I was finding the oils really helpful for my stress and for my mood. And um, the peppermint was really, really clearing for my sinuses. So I was starting to kind of breathe that a little bit easier. And um, I was also using it for my digestive system. Um, and bit by bit, things started to improve. So a few months later, I felt I was actually, you know, I had the motivation, I had the energy to join my local gym, <clears throat> which was phenomenal because I was actually exercising again regularly. Yeah. I started kind of so I started taking um their lifelong vitality supplements so their vitamins and minerals um and again my digestive system started to kind of naturally clear I started taking the digestive enzymes which were a complete game changer for my sinuses and um, within kind of say a few months of using them they're completely cleared and touch wood they've never they've never reverted back started to use oils more for um for my throat infections and for <clears throat> excuse me for my asthma <clears throat> And massive, again, massive changes in all of those things um, in terms of I didn't kind of we'll say didn't suffer with throat infections anymore. Um, I, can, I was able to manage my asthma without inhalers because one of the side effects I used to have from using the inhalers was it would kill off my taste buds. Um, so foods and things like that didn't taste yeah. particularly appetizing to me, which wasn't fun. <clears throat> so I'm something now that I could use to kind of naturally, naturally manage it that little bit easier for myself. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, just I think bit by bit, and I suppose then I start to kind of will say share them with friends and family and get loads more um, stories and things like that reports back again to me. And bit by bit, I just felt more of a need and more of a call to, to share my experiences with, with others, basically. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, you really did have a, it was a slow progression in healing though. Yes, but I think it just, what I say to people is, you know, I didn't expect the oils were going to fix everything for me overnight. I had a long way to go 
from where I started to where I am now. Um, and a lot of kind of, you know, things that needed to change. Um, and, you know, I had to exercise. I wasn't going to, and I had to change my diet. None of the things that I used were going to work without me doing those things. I wasn't going to be in full perfect health if I was still eating badly and I wasn't exercising. That was yeah. never going to happen. But they always gave me the tools that I needed to actually be able to kind of, you know, do those things and to yeah. feel better in myself for them. So. Wow. And then you kind of started using them because you're a massage therapist. You started using them on your clients. Now, what did your clients think? Fantastic feedback again. Um, like I'd obviously kind of go say um, used other oils um, before that through kind of, I didn't, we had never been aromatherapy trained. I didn't really know anything about essential oils. I knew like, you know, lavender was good for calming and, you know, things like that, but I wouldn't have known anything more specific. Um, so again, I kind of shared, like, you know, I gave out like lots of samples of the deep blue rub and, um, it was really helpful kind of would say for people who would like to say more kind of aches or pains in their shoulders and, you know, well, I don't know if this is the same in the States, but in Ireland, people really like to talk about like their little aches and pains or their ailments and stuff like that. Um, so anytime I was kind of like, I always had my modern essentials book with me, which is the book that I would use kind of say to tell me what to do with the oils. So anytime any of my friends or my clients mentioned ailments, I would go out and I would look up the book and see what it said. And I'd be like, oh, would you mind just trying this and just see, because I just wanted to get my own kind of testimonials back a lot of the time. Um, yeah. And yeah, I got some really lovely kind of stories about really simple little things that helped people. Um, like, you know, like using like lemon oil to help kind of would say with like the digestive system. Um, or um, even like one lady had really kind of would say she had she had fallen and she'd had a really bad kind of would say pain in her arm. Um, and she had been kind of taking like her painkillers and stuff like that and they weren't really helping her. And the only oil that she had was um, Melaleuca, which we wouldn't, I would never have recommended for discomfort in the arm. Um, but she applied some of that and got massive, massive relief within one application, um, which was so shocking to me because I would never have recommended it as being for, you know, like for pain relief before. Um, so just lovely little things like that. And I kept getting loads and loads of those um, over the months and over the years since. So it's been lovely. Yeah, it is. It, it's been a, um, an incredible, I think there are people who don't realize how incredible they are because especially I've talked to many other people who've bought in oils um, from other companies or in a health food store and don't find them being effective for their health um, yeah. pursuing their own health. Um, but I really think that the cool thing about doTERRA is that it like empowers you to have like a whole bunch of, um, things at home that really, really move the needle in your overall health, not just in like one little area, but in actually feeling like from where you started using the oils to where you are now, what would you say your health rate would be in overall? So I have this little quiz that I give my clients when they come in for consultation. So I ask them how they feel their energy is out of 10 to give themselves a rating. So okay. if I was asked this back in 2014, my number would have been like, what, like a two or a three. Whereas now most of the time I'm a nine or a 10. Um, I ask them what their pain level is like. So this should be zero, obviously. And again, mine would have been kind of, we'll say about like, not very high, but like a constant kind of five or six, four or five, five to six. Um, and now it's zero most of the time. Um, and then I ask them what their digestive system is like. So again, this would have been kind of, we'll say off like, ridiculously bad for me um like eight before or or sorry no like like one to two before and now yeah. it's like again eight or nine now, I haven't got every single thing perfect with my diet just yet but I'm getting there I still have a couple of other foods that I need to kind of like cut out and try it out and all the rest of it um my sleep is always really good like 10 out of 10 and before this it would have been like oh like I would say a three or a four um, and what kind of would say my mood was like. So again, my mood would have fluctuated quite a lot between, you know, feelings of anxiousness, not always kind of feeling my best to now feeling good again, 99% of the time. So it's definitely been a massive, a massive shift and a massive change for me. And so to be honest with you, it's, it's even having something at home because one of my things was I used to go to bed feeling and knowing that I was getting sick. I'd have that really run down feeling and I'd know I was going to wake up sick. So I'd have to kind of like, in, and in Ireland, you have to wait until you're sick to go to the doctor. There's no, there's no such thing as proactive uh, medical care or things like that. As I, I love my having my health insurance, but what it is, is sick care, not health care. Um, mm -hmm. So I love kind of say now that I know that I can apply my On Guard, I can apply my Melaleuca, I can take my frankincense and reapply those every couple of hours when I'm feeling a bit run down. And I just, I, I've known now from experience that it means that I'm A, not going to get sick or B, if I do pick up something, I'll be over it within a couple of days. So it just, it's made that really kind of feeling like I feel, 
I can do something for myself. And I know friends of mine who are parents and who have that love, that feeling for their kids as well. They know they have something in their medicine cabinet at home that's safe, that's effective, and that they can have right there. If, even if this is three o'clock in the morning and their, their child is, is feeling unwell, that they have something that they can, they can go to to use. Yeah. Yeah. And as a nurse, I can tell you, I love it that, um, it's not like you can totally overdose. I mean, you can have a too many oils on you experience and, um, it won't be so pleasant, (laughs) but it's not like you're going to, um, accidentally take too much Tylenol and destroy your liver as many people have with cold and flu season. Um, I was just thinking about doing a podcast almost just on that because you know, it's an accidental overdose has happened every year. And those are accidental to over-the-counter medications that people don't realize to the, how much Tylenol, to how much um, ibuprofen. Not saying those drugs aren't ba- are, are bad. They have yeah. use. Um, but taking too much of them and taking them consistently every single day. Um, I, I'll never forget, I took care of a teacher that um, we had to dialyze her because her kidneys, she went into kidney failure from taking ibuprofen every day. Wow. And yeah, what are you thinking yeah, about it? Just popping the pills every day. I mean, you see it on the commercials to do. Yeah, I, I've actually, I've only, I've only been to the States a couple of times and I was so shocked that you actually have those kind of advertisements constantly for like medications. We don't have that. We don't have it to that extent in Ireland. Now, there is still definitely um, an overprescription of a lot of things here. Um, and I know a lot of parents who love kind of would say having something that doesn't have side effects may include on the side of the bottle and um, it's a very, <laughs> very big thing yeah it is but it's, it's something that we never would have thought of like I would have grown up with you know in the very kind of we'll say conventional medical model but even when I look back like when we were sick and we had a fever mom and dad wouldn't give us anything they would literally kind of say like get us even if it was the middle of the night they would get us up and like sponge us down with like um co- our warm water like to kind of like so we'd feel yeah. okay but that our system would still be naturally able to fight it as opposed to now it's like you know, get the fever down and we need to get them, we need to give them like cal bottle, we need to get them paracetamol, we need to get the fever down. So I think that there has been a kind of a, mo- a moving away from a lot of the, the natural kind of holistic stuff, even within the space of a generation. So it's nice to kind of see that there's more of a, more of a desire now to get back to something that's a little bit more natural. And the thing for me is I tried natural things, but I needed something that was natural and effective. And to me before doTERRA, I hadn't really found anything like that. So it's definitely been a massive, um, a massive kind of bonus for that. And since, since I kind of discovered like, you know, good education around natural products, I've discovered lots of different kind of, let's say, um, ranges, not just doTERRA that I would use for different bits. And it's kind of opened up a whole new world of natural health for me, you know, so. Absolutely. I literally have a pillbox of supplements that I... (laughs) Um, consume. I haven't done mine this morning. I have to actually do that. Yeah, I'm the same way because I had a kid with um, major issues and um, I actually really tried all sorts of different different things. I mean, I tried the elderberry for her immune system. I tried the cordyceps mushrooms from China because that's Chinese medicine. And yeah. oh my goodness. I mean, because we have really cool health food stores where I was living before in Colorado. There's just so many of them. People are very into that in the state I was living, not the state I'm in right this moment in the U.S., but in that particular area. And so I tried all sorts of things. I mean, um, and then I had knee issues and I spent thousands of dollars and I'm, and so it's one that they, the they're, they actually cost less and but there's two that they're effective and that three were were literally empowering people that and giving them the tools and going listen your self-care your daily habits and your self-care really will gear your health towards this way or that way and that's what we do i think as wellness advocates we really educate that and i really think we're seeing a robust of of people um have life major life experiences and not just with their health so much with their emotions. I have had so many people that have had such a powerful aspect of their life change with their emotions and their mindset and their mood. Yeah, that's um, actually the thing that I teach most about. And it seems to be kind of, we'll say, one of the things that I educate about a lot with my clients, I suppose because it has such a big crossover to energy work, is you know how we feel dictates everything. And I know for me, that was a lot of my problem was I didn't feel like doing the good things. 
when we feel good, we're more inclined to go out for our walk and we're more inclined to eat well for our bodies. And, you know, when we don't feel well, we don't, we don't, oh, I don't feel like going for a walk today or, you know, I don't, I want to, I want to treat myself. And we, when we say treat ourselves, we mean eat junk. <laughs> so, you know, it's, there's a lot of this kind of cycle that we have um, that needs to kind of be shifted. And the oils have such an amazing effect on like our limbic system, on our brain, telling, you know, getting new messages into the cells. Um, and so simple, so natural that, you know, um, I have friends who, you know, Jesus, like, I don't think they would be here without antidepressants and they're so life-saving um, in some in some regards and for some people. But again, they're becoming something that's really over-prescribed. I mean, I have clients of mine who have gone um, to their GP and, you know, have said, you know, I'm going through a bit of a tough time. And, you know, sometimes they're just literally there for a, sa- like, you know, trying to explain to the GP what's going on with them and automatically they're trying to write them a prescription without saying, you know, do you want to, you know, change your diet or have you tried exercise or, you know, have you tried natural things? And that's not all okay, GPs. Look at your hormones because hormones have such a big play yeah. to what's going on with your mood too. I know they don't look any further before they put the prescription pad out and they're addicting and they're, you have to, you, you have to wait. You can't just cut off a antidepressant. No, no one tells and me. That's the other thing. That's why they should be, I think, um, more kind of would say careful in the position. Now, thankfully, again, I'm seeing more and more um, GPs who are not as willing to prescribe. Um, it, it tends to be kind of would say the newer system and the newer kind of GPs that are coming through that aren't as kind of readily prescribing. I think a lot of the older kind of school um, model maybe are still doing so, but I think it's going to take a cycle through. But I think that it's not going to happen until people actually kind of would say feel like they have other alternatives as well. Because, I mean, if you're feeling bad, you're not there's no point in just saying people just stay that way. You need something yeah. <clears throat> to get you out of that. So I do think it's great for people to know that they have alternatives and ones that are safe to use um, if they still want to, you know, pursue kind of say their their medical route and, you know, talk to their doctor. Maybe they maybe they still need antidepressants, but maybe they want something that's going to help them to support them naturally as well. So Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I um I have another call I'm going to be doing it here in a minute, so I can't take, but I want to thank you. Now you've de- decided at first you were just going to be a customer. I just want to do a really short, tell us why you decided to do the business and yeah. just give us a little short of how amazing the business part of doTERRA has been. Perfect. So I decided to do the business because I had reached the ceiling of the, the level of income that I could reach in my own business. Um, I found myself, irre- like couldn't replace myself in my business. So my upline talked to me about the opportunity with doTERRA and initially I was like okay well I'm just going to earn a little bit of extra money to kind of we'll say um you know cover basics I could say my mm-hmm. my savings and my loans and my overheads for my business and from kind of we'll say the last from sharing and from kind of getting the stories back and from feeling kind of we'll say the empowerment that's out there and from seeing the change that doTERRA wants to make in the world I've kind of gotten myself to a place where I'm more aligned with that rather than me working person to person in my clinic I can now reach a much wider audience with a message of health than I was otherwise going to be able to do and that for me has kind of will say been massive and the financial kind of benefit that I've even gotten so far on the area kind of stages of my business have been massive and particularly at the moment when my bricks and mortar business as I call it has been completely closed down I still have income from doTERRA that's supporting me so that has been massive as well so especially yeah as we're recording this you know everyone even in Ireland is on lockdown and so having um a side income right now with uh having your like you said your regular business you're not allowed to do it is is well, it's been closed since march and we're i'm not allowed to go back to work until the end of july so that's quite a Aren't significant really? it's the end of july there yeah for my yeah. particular business because i work one-on-one with people that's the, the stages that they've said so other people will be back to work before me but that's the level that I've got and that's I mean for me I'm fine with that because I I have an income but for people who don't it's it's quite it's quite taxing so to have a residual income and to have a second income I think is huge regardless so yeah yeah and I don't care what you guys do um and and to think that actually last month when other people other businesses weren't doing well um my volume in my business was in doTERRA was quite high so I'm yeah. sure you've got the same thing so it's it's products that are used. There's people still buying them right now, and yeah, they're giving them their budget month. <laughs> exactly. They're giving people um what they really need right now, and so yeah, that's that's important. But I have one more person I'm gonna have to hop on and do another um Zoom with. So I want to thank you so much for being on the podcast. Um, and I um, maybe say we will meet someday in person at the convention. Um, yes. We all can meet up again. We all look forward to the Terra Convention. 
and never, never know, maybe I might come visit you in your country because I love to travel. So you Definitely. should. Travel. So thank you so much for being so much. Thank you for having me.